It's the one thing I give every new investor. I go, listen, if your commitment is to invest in real estate, first off, you need to get your financial house in order. So work with an investor-focused mortgage broker so that he can get or she can get all of the information you need. You can understand where you're at from everything from your credit score to where's your capital, where's the down payment coming from, what equity have you got, what's your net worth, yeah. you know, what's your profit and loss statement look like. So you get your financial house in order first and foremost. Know where your down payment's coming from because there's no point in wasting a realtor's time if you can't pull the trigger on a deal. Hey there, do you wanna skip the trial and error in real estate investing? Visit my website, dwonderful.com. I will show you how to do double your income in no time at all. A broke single mom fired from Denny's becomes America's most sought after real estate investor. How does that happen? Well, that's me, Dwan Ben Twyford, AKA Dwanderful. But it doesn't stop there. I, along with some amazing guests, are gonna teach you everything there is to know about investing. Listen, success is not exclusive. I can teach you, you can have it too. I can share with you. So I want you to join me for season five of the most wonderful real estate podcast ever. Cheers. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of the most wonderful real estate podcast ever. I am your host, Juan Benton Twyford. I'm America's most sought after real estate investor. And I am super excited that you are here with us today. As you can see, I have a guest. So we're going to talk to Pat Patrick Francie in just a second. If you are new to me and you're new to Dwanderful, I took my first name Dwan and Wonderful and I made a new word. <laughs> so you can go to Dwanderful, D-W-A-N-D-E-R-F-U-L.com. And I've got some free ebooks and some fun things for you. Our motto at Dwonderful is people before profits. So if that resonates with you, I'm your girl. All right. So, Patrick, welcome to the show today. Thanks for having me join you. I'm excited that you're on. I'm excited to learn about you and find out who you are. But we always like to start off. We just have like a quick toast. So I'm having water. What do you have? I, I've got some really great water right there. <laughs> cheers. Everybody watching, cheers. Cheers, cheers. And you all know, I tell you to take a deep breath and just uh, kind of stretch out whatever's been on your mind today. And then tune in and give us a few minutes of your time. And I can guarantee you that you'll be happy that you did. Okay, so how are you, Mr. Patrick? I'm fantastic. I'm here on the West Coast, uh, just outside of Vancouver, Canada, and it's a very nice day. So uh, it's great. Great spring day. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm uh, actually in Iowa right now. We own some buildings, and so I'm in Clinton, Iowa right now. And it's hot here today. It's like 85 degrees. It's like, oh, my Lord, why is this so hot here? <laughs> Because nice. we, we live in Colorado. It's like, okay, it's not quite that kind of heat in Colorado just yet. So, uh, so Patrick, what we like to do over here is we're just going to kind of throw you to the wolves. And we just want you to give us your name. I just like it to be in the top of the show notes. How we can reach you, like on social medias or website. And like in just a sentence, what you do. And then I'm going to ask you all kinds of fun questions to find out how you came to be Patrick on my podcast. There you go. Perfect. Well, my <laughs> name is Patrick Francie. It'll remain Patrick Francie for the rest of the show. Uh, you know, you can follow me uh, on my Twitter feed, which is just P Francie. And Francie is, is just France with a Y. So P Francie. My Instagram's P Francie. I have a podcast that is called The Everyday Millionaire. And uh, I've had that podcast now for eight plus years. And I'm the CEO of the Real Estate Investment Network, which is a business that has been in operation in Canada for 30 plus years. And we educate real estate investors in how to buy real estate the right way. We don't yep. sell real estate. We're education and economic research. That's just kind of the cold notes about me. No, I love it. Short and right to the point. So I love that. So you have had a podcast for eight years. I have. So I am in my fifth year right now. 
Yeah. And like today, I'm like, okay, my camera, I've been this week, like my camera, because it's on my laptop. So I've been scouring the internet today, looking to like upgrade, get a little fancier with all my equipment and stuff. So I'm like, I'm going to have to up my game now because now everybody's got a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it's oh. Fun. Podcasts are great. You get to meet cool people. You do. I love doing it. I, I was on, I, I had, I don't even know, for like five years, I had probably a hundred people had me on as a guest and I would always like I don't really understand I just like I didn't get it I didn't like quite grasp and like well it's kind of like a radio but it's on the internet and I was like and then one day I don't even know what happened I just like I suddenly I just understood what it was I was listening to enough of them I saw a couple and I thought oh hey I've been doing this for 35 years I have a lot of knowledge I'd like to do a podcast and there it began and now I'm in my fifth year so you are one of the first few guests in my fifth season beautiful and um, it's really been fun because I get to meet so many super cool people. One hundred percent. I've you know there's a there's a fundamental that my podcast Everyday Millionaire was really born out of the request of people you know by people for me to write a book and I I what I didn't really feel like I had a book in me and so the podcast idea came up while I was sitting on the beach in a Saint Lucia. And, you know, eight years ago and even five years ago when you started your podcast, they they weren't the cool thing to do. No. And but I decided that would be a way of kind of taking some of what I wanted to do in terms of my own knowledge, but also bringing guests in. So the the, the concept for the podcast was seemingly ordinary individuals who achieved extraordinary results. And so now eight years later, uh, you know, we're in the top. 10 per no not even i think a like top two percent of podcasts and that was an interesting kind of journey and we've only recently launched our youtube side of it but the audio side of it you know we're getting you know well over a hundred thousand downloads a month on the show and uh people are very engaged and it's uh yeah it's it's been a fun journey it is fun they are fun i started my uh youtube channel like a year and a half ago or something and i was at a podcast event it was in denver called uh pod movement i think it's like a i don't know there's all kinds of people there that have podcasts and then they have like a convention area for people that have things for podcasters and someone mm -hmm. goes well, where do you rank on listen notes and i was like i don't know what listen notes is so in front of these people i'm like listen notes i type in my podcast it has an overall ranking of 0.05 percent and i was like is that good? She's like, that's in like the tip top of the echelons of podcasts. So I'm yeah. like, screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. <laughs> I was like, dang. So I didn't even know that it was doing that good. So yeah, and they are super fun. So let's talk about this. I like Everyday Millionaire. Mm -hmm. That is a great concept and that is a great title. And so what does that mean to you? Like, what is an Everyday Millionaire? Well, it was, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the years, you know, I've been in business over 40 years. And so when I and and I've been a coach of some sort over the past 25 years, whether that's small business owners or real estate investors. But ultimately, yeah. I think that everybody starts out at, you know, maybe a little different today, but there was always a goal to be a millionaire. I want to have a million dollars or I want to have a million in my bank account. Somebody at some point was saying, I want to be a millionaire. And what I started to realize at some point in my life is that I was surrounded by a number of people who were just quietly pretty wealthy. You know, they were oh, yeah. well in excess of a million dollars, but they just did their thing and they weren't extraordinary, you know, extravagant. They weren't front facing with, you know, Rolexes and Lamborghinis, although some of them did, but that wasn't the norm. And I just realized that I knew so many people who were and had created some great wealth, some great net worth, and they were just quietly doing what they do without any fanfare. And I went, wow, I would like to hear from them. I'd like to be able to have conversations with those individuals. Exactly. So the podcast became that. And that's that's really, I've attracted far more than all of that as the show evolved. But that was the premise of the show. Yeah, I read that book. I'm sure you've read it, The Millionaire Next Door. Sure. Uh, I mean, maybe in my 20s, and I was like, I want to be a millionaire. Like, that was when I first started thinking, I want to be a millionaire. And they're just like regular people. I'm mm -hmm. a regular person. I could be a millionaire. 
And I remember reading that book and like it kind of struck with me that back in the day, you know, they drive Fords and they drive pickup trucks and they're just like regular people. I was like, oh, I'm a regular person. I'm going to do that. <laughs> no idea how I was going to do it. I was just had the thought of I'm going to be a millionaire. And then, you know, mm-hmm. here we are. So um, now tell me about your real estate journey. How long have you been in your real estate journey? Well, like you said, I've been a business owner for 40 years. I still, uh, I own multiple businesses, you know, but the one fundamental back in the day was a business that I still own to this day. And when I was working in that business, you know, I was listening to a few, I call them mentors. And, you know, what I started to observe with some of the business owners that I knew and that I admired, and I thought, gosh, you know, I look at them and some of them were making, you know, their businesses were uber successful. I mean, like, millions of dollars, but regardless of how much wealth they were creating in their business, the one thing that I noticed they all had in common was that they were owning real estate. They were investing in real estate. And so back in about 2000, 1998, actually, to be specific, I started saying, you know, I got to take a look at this whole real estate thing. And I mean, back then, I didn't even know how to spell real estate. You know, is it one word? Is it two words? Do I capitalize (laughs) it? You know, like, how do we put it together? And so I went, you know, I started on the journey of uh, looking into real estate and I came across the Real Estate Investment Network or RAIN, which is a national organization here in Canada. And I, it was based on teaching people how to invest in real estate, how to grow a portfolio, how to create that financial uh, security, certainty, financial freedom, whatever term you want to use by investing in real estate. So uh, I joined the Rain community, and that really took me on the journey. And I bought my first property in about 2000, and uh, you know, really just kept on going from there. In 2007, the owner of the business, then uh, best-selling author, uh, seven different books here in Canada, Don R. Campbell. Uh, I had gotten to know him a little bit. I had transitioned out of my business as a, as an operational owner. So I'd gone from being a entrepreneurial technician owner to a business owner. And uh, so he asked me, you know, one day he says, so what are you going to do next? You know, you're out of your business. So what's next for you? And I go, I, I really don't know. <laughs> and so he said, well, do, well, why don't you, would you like to join me on my team and uh, move to another province in Canada to British Columbia, which I did my with my wife. And yeah, so we moved to British Columbia for the most part, kind of a part-time, full-time between two provinces, but ultimately we came to BC. And uh, and then in 2014, I bought the business from him. So that was kind of my entrepreneurial accident in alignment with the fact that I'd started investing in real estate and loved this. I just love the education component of it and the coaching component of what we do. Uh, We do a lot of that, both my wife and I, in different genres of coaching. But that was the real estate journey. started back in 2000 when I bought my first condo and rented it. You bought a condo. Yeah, that was kind of the first entry. It was a it was felt like a safe and kind of something I could wrap my mind around at the time. So I did that. Yeah, no, I know. I love it. I love it. So what, so you're, I understand, so REIN, so in um, the States we have, they're called REIA, Real Estate mm-hmm. Investor Associations. So I'm mm-hmm. assuming it's kind of the same thing. Well, you're uh, the Real Estate Investor Association. I, I'm not totally familiar with it, but as soon as I hear association, I think there's a governing body to it and, or it may be a you know, some some municipal, some government back thing. And I'm not saying that's what it is. I don't know uh, what it is. It's just someone that decides, hey, I'm going to start a real estate meeting and we meet the first oh, okay. week of every so, month at this hotel and everybody that, shows up and, you know, and there you, there you go. you teach and you talk and you meet and you network. Yeah. So different than what we're probably maybe in the line with what we do, but the Real Estate Investment Network is about 32 years in Canada. And that's basically what we do is teach investors not only how to invest in real estate, but we also give them the tools to determine where a real estate market is going to go into the future based on what's happening economically. So there is a system, a process of kind of analyzing the data, looking at the economic fundamentals that drive real estate, and then being able to get in front of the wave. So in other words, as investors, we want to know where real estate is going. We don't care so much where it's been. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So with all the variable things that you do in real estate, what's your favorite part about real estate investing? 
you know, I it that's interesting. It's a good question because, you know, early on it was I wanted to get in there and I liked the finding the deal, negotiating the deal. I liked probably probably all aspects of it. What I got to fairly quickly, you know, in the in the first, let's say, less than 10 years was that I started to realize that the game that I liked about real estate was the result. So in other words, I kind of got out of the trenches of investing. You know, I'd done enough of it. I'd done enough deals. I had managed enough properties. I had kind of handled all the the kind of operational stuff that I wanted yeah. to. And now I, I'm just really, you know, over the years, I evolved to become just a capital partner and or, uh, you know, buying deals that were turnkey, that were there, just showed up and I could park my capital. Nice. Okay, so that's a good idea. Now, do you get involved with any kind of syndications or do you do anything like that? Or are you just mostly into the capital, the lending? Yeah, I mean, I've been involved in and I've not kind of put my name on the dotted line of opening, let's say, a limited partnership or a, a trust. I, I haven't been interested in going that deep into it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was more, like I say, early on, it was more about actually investing, buying real estate, single family, multifamily, light industrial, growing my portfolio. That was really kind of where I was at. Because keep in mind, uh, uh, for me, what I really was, was a business owner. What I love is business. And real estate for me wasn't the full-time game I wanted to play. Although it sometimes seems like it is because I'm so <laughs> entrenched in supporting real estate investors and giving them guidance, lining them up with our community of trusted partners. And by trusted partners, I mean everything from mortgage brokers to lawyers to realtors, et cetera, that help them achieve their goals investing in real estate. Now, you know, many of our clients within the RAIN community are people with full-time jobs, careers. They're they're everything from doctors and lawyers to, you know, plumbers and welders. I mean, it's just a gambit of people who say, I would like to grow my net worth and create a financial future investing in real estate. Now, out of that, in our education within the community, we have hundreds of people that have gone on to build very, not only significant portfolios, but significant businesses of being a in the trenches investor, but as well as developers and builders and all yeah. of the things that go into it. I love it. I love all of it. And you help and coach and mentor people through whichever aspect they want. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, because some of them, like, they get into this world of, okay, I'm going to do this rent-to-own business, or I'm going to do a fix and flip or a wholesaling business. I'm going to start a trust. I'm going to start a, an LP, whatever the scenario might be. But they're going, no, this is what my business is. It's my business is investing in real estate. And they raise capital, and they do all of the yeah. things that they do to turn it into a very viable and profitable business. Now, I love that. So if I'm a newbie, let's just say... I, newbie, I'm a newbie, and I find you, and I say, Patrick, listen, I want you to show me the way. Yep. What would be like an actionable tip, something that you could say, okay, Dwan, here's a good place. Do this or do that, or do you go that far into it? Well, you know, most rookies, what they do is they start out on, you know, searching the internet, you know, on MLS, looking at properties, which is, you know, really kind of a state of where you are in your own evolution and development of being an investor, right? So, you know, for me, for me, what I usually get people to start up, depending on where we're entering the conversation, is, you know, an old phrase that a friend shared with me many years ago, an investor, very successful. And he goes, you know, Patrick, you can't steal in slow motion. And oh, went, yeah, I've heard that yeah, before. Yeah, well, of course, the meaning of that is, that in his case, is that deals come along and if you're going to get that deal, you have to be prepared to take action. You got to be able to pull the trigger on a deal. So, you know, one of the things that get in many people's ways, depending on the market, and, you know, given what both the US and Canada have gone through, there was a time where, you know, the market was hot. Deals had, you had to be prepared because deals were going to show up and you had to be ready to pull the trigger. So, back to the question that you asked is the one thing I give every new investor I go, listen, if your commitment is to invest in real estate, first off, you need to get your financial house in order. So, 
work with an investor focused mortgage broker so that he can get or she can get all of the information you need. You can understand where you're at from everything from your credit score to where's your capital, where's the down payment coming from, what equity have you got, what's your net worth, yeah. you know, what's your profit and loss statement look like. So you get your financial house in order first and foremost. Know where your down payment's coming from because there's no point in wasting a realtor's time if you can't pull the trigger on a deal and if yeah. you have to backpedal and go, okay, well, I'm not quite ready yet. Well, that's just a waste of everybody's time and you're going to lose those deals. So get your financial house in order. That's my first That's my first step for any new investor. Regardless, you may not buy a property for another year. I don't care. Get your financial house in order. That's where I start. I think that's a really good tip because you know I, I teach a lot. I go to a lot of these read groups and I they do like two-day workshops and I come and teach for two days. I'm like, hey, here's how to wholesale and here's how to do subject two and here's how to do this and this. You know, and I teach people like that. And and I meet people and they'll say, Well, you know, I'm working on my LLC and I've got to get my website. And I see them a year later. Well, I still haven't quite got my stuff. And it's like, okay, so so just admit to yourself you're never gonna do it <laughs> and save yourself the agony. Or the next time I see you, have your house in order, have your company, have your website, have your all your things, have your letters, find the people you want to work with and have all that stuff ready or stop coming up to me every year and going, oh, I'm working on it because you're not doing anything. Yeah. You have to well, meet people like that. Years <laughs> later, they're still like, oh, I'm working on my website. It's like, seriously, what does that even mean? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting within Rain, you know, like, uh, you know, I've I've worked with literally thousands of real estate investors yeah. now, you know, one on one, one on many, you know, spoke on many stages of hundreds of people. And, you know, you meet a lot of individuals. And yet, you know, Rain teaches and has for many years now taught a 15 step system. Now, within those 15 steps are all of the things that you need to do to take action in investing in real estate. What you just described is really common where you see people in motion doing busy work, but it's just in motion. They're not in action, but they fool themselves into thinking they're in action because they just attended another event. They just learned something new. But and and even that can be very actionable knowledge, but they're not taking action. So there's a I part call of it the same that, thing, busy work. It's like stop doing the busy yeah. work. Do yeah. something. Yes. So get stuff ready and then take action. What are you working backwards from? So, you know, that is like literally saying, okay, I plan and I commit to buying my first property in the next 90 days. Great. What does that first property look like? What does it got to, how does it got to show up for you? Is it cash flow? Is it a duplex, triplex, fourplex? What is it? You know, is it detached? Get clear on that and then start working backwards from an outcome. What I've always found interesting is that it is a bit of a mindset game, uh, Duan, because when you think about it and you've, you've experienced the same thing, I teach the same things. I coach the same things. Yeah. And literally tens of thousands of people over the past 20 years. The question then becomes is, why is it that so many crush it? They just go up, they get their first door, they build a portfolio, whatever that portfolio yeah. is for them. And then others are just running around in circles and they never, ever seem to pull the trigger on anything. And so I always ask myself that question. And of course, it all boils down to mindset and belief systems and all of the things that uh, get in people's way. And but ultimately, you know, you as a coach or me as a coach, there's a phrase that I often use is that I go, I'm here to coach you, not coax you. And so that is i'm not a coax i'm a coach so like for it. you for you i'm going to give you actionable things to do you need uh -huh. to go do them and then come back to me are you enjoying this episode make sure you don't miss a single solitary episode click subscribe like follow all the things so you get notifications whenever time a new show comes out and let your friends know about it too it's amazing all right, so if you want to learn more about real estate investing, just reach out to dwanderful.com. I'll send you some free stuff. Back to the show. So do you think, because I like what you said there, do you think the thing that keeps the people that become like uber successful, the people that are just like piddling along, do you believe it's mindset that that's the thing 
Is that where it is? Because I like fear is part of mindset. So I know a lot of it's fear. And you said, I like the fact that you said mindset, but what do you think it is? You shouldn't take a hundred, you know, a hundred people that have, have you've helped and 10 are like off the charts and the rest are just kind of like, what do you think that is, that factor? Well, there's a good question, right? Because the how-tos don't change. You know, ultimately, as many strategies and tactics that you yourself coach, ultimately, it, it's all the same stuff. You know, it really is the how-tos are, you know, if you're going to wholesale, if you're going to fix and flip, if you're going to buy and hold, the hows are really there. There's not too many containers that eventually you run out of containers of how-tos. I mean, so there's, so you can get really colorful and you can get creative and all the rest of it, but ultimately the hows are already kind of locked down. Somebody's done yep. it before. So yep. the question becomes, okay, well, well, why is it that some people can do it and others can't? And so when we look at the broad term, it's called mindset. But then, you know, with the, what's underneath the mindset, the first is, is that there's an awareness around it. And we all have to have the awareness of what is in our way. We have to ask ourselves what is in our way and then bust through whatever belief systems we have. You know, there's lots of people that go, well, it's the fear of failure. And I go, I get that. You know, everybody has that at some level to begin yeah, with. We all do. But, but understanding that you have to keep moving. I sometimes equate it to going to the gym, you know, where you're working out. So you're going to lift a certain weight and you lift that weight. And soon you say, well, I'm going to try and lift more weight. And you try lifting a heavier weight. And all of a sudden it doesn't work. You have to back off and you go, okay, well, I got to keep working towards that. Doesn't mean you quit working out. Yeah, you don't and quit. You don't quit. And very few, by the way, I mean, when you really break it down, unless you get yourself into really big trouble, which is not, you can, is totally avoidable if you just follow the system, is that failure being catastrophic is really quite rare. You know, we we live into the illusion that, you know, we're going to be, you know, pushing a cart on the, you know, the poorest part of our city one day. And that's kind of the story we tell ourselves. And, and the, reality, the reality of it is, is that if you're paying attention and if you're following a system, you're actually risk mitigating the whole way. And so, you know, so you're not, it's not always, a, or it won't be a catastrophic failure. Are some lessons more expensive than others? Yes. And you know, and I know that because we've made them. I mean, we've had some expensive lessons along the way. Oh, and then when we reflect on those lessons, let's face it, you know, we can see where we maybe took a shortcut. Maybe we went, oh, okay, well, I'll try it this way instead. Uh, and we increase the risk. You know, that's on uh, us. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I have, I tell you, I, I told my husband, I said, I should write a book about all the, the dumb things I've done. Because <laughs> there's so many, and most of them are really funny, and they were just because I didn't know. I didn't have anyone to tell me, so I did it. And then I'm like, oh, okay, don't yeah. do that again. And then it helps me, you know, teach and, and be better with other people. So I'm going to switch topics for a minute. Tell me, mm -hmm. what is your favorite band of all time? Oh. That's a big question. What is my favorite band all the time? I'm not a big music fan, although I I like music a lot. And am I attached to any band? Oh, everybody's got to have one where you hear it and it's like, ah. Uh, well, there's there's some stuff that takes me back in you know in my in you know, it takes me back into memories, right? So like okay. good times that I had. So. You know, it could be, you know, like Jethro Tull, you know, I can, it comes to mind where I go, oh, I like Jethro Tull. But, you know, when I think about some of the stuff I like around Elton John, it's really cool. Oh, yeah. You know, so it depends on, I guess, you know, what shows up for me and uh, some old rock and roll. You know, I'm a kind of an old rock and roll guy. Oh, no, me too. I, I love all the bands from the 70s. Yeah, yeah. I was a teenager sure. in the 70s. Anybody yeah. in the 70s, I know all the bands, all the songs, all the stuff. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and everything takes me back to a place or a time yes. or an event or a high school or a, or a date or something. Like, Man, yeah. 70s yeah. were like powerful. So I'm that's on cool. that page. I was just yeah. listening, literally listening to a, a friend shared with me an old Burton Cummings. Uh, Burton Cummings uh, tune, and uh, it was great. Like when he was Burton really Cummings young. Is good. No, I never yeah. hear anybody ever talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just think music is like you can tell a lot about people by the kind of music that they listen to. 
Mm-hmm. Like if someone listens to something so polar opposite of you, I feel like at the end of the day, if that's a person you want to work with or hang out or whatever, and things are so different, that might not always be your kind of person. Exactly. So I don't know. I feel like music kind of uh, shows us who we are. What about food? What's your favorite food? What are you just like, oh, I can't wait to eat this thing. Well, you know something? I'm so blessed that my wife loves to cook. Uh So, you know, I'm I'm definitely a ribeye steak uh, (laughs) guy. Uh, My wife loves to cook, but so do my daughters and chosen family. So I literally am surrounded by foodies. Interestingly enough, is that I eat for utility if I'm on my own. Like to me, it's, you know, it's just calories you know that's really what it is i you know if i'm alone i'll have a bowl of cereal almost it's almost that bad not quite but it's that way but i love food but <laughs> i'm not now, a foodie I'm i've been by foodie. myself this whole week every day i've had a bowl of cereal with a razor brand with a banana it's like well i don't need to cook i just throw a banana and i'm gonna get some fruits and the raisins and i got some yeah, yeah. Cool I was like, ah, that's good i'm good so yeah, yeah. I- i'm the same way if i don't have someone that's like hey let's go eat or let me make this amazing thing for you. I yes. could probably live on cereal and sandwiches. Well, we live in the country too. So we grow our, a lot of our own food, our own vegetables and, oh, you know, so nice. spinach and tomatoes. And and so, you know, they'll go, you know, one of the girls will go out and grab all the things we need for an amazing salad. And then they put the, they put the amazing salad together and I they get do. to enjoy it. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. They do. I uh, So I'm from Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. And so we grew up in a town outside Dayton it called West Milton. And everybody, and we had 10 acres. So like everybody has a garden and everybody out there raises like chickens and maybe you slaughter a pig every year and, you know, you can and all this stuff. And so, and so younger, we just kind of would take it and, you know, it's all fresh. So as I got a little bit older, I like went to visit my dad one time and he and his wife, they go, oh, we're going to get all this fresh stuff from the garden. I'm like, oh man, it's going to be so great. Now I am a little older now and I'm more aware of what I'm eating. So they bring in like, they cut squash, they cut tomatoes, they get some beans, they, got, they get lettuce. And then when it comes on the plate, it, the squash has been deep fried and like cornmeal and stuff. The lettuce is called wilted lettuce, where you put hot bacon grease on it and wilt it. (laughs) I was like, and the tomatoes are fried. It's like, what happened to all that food right there that we just picked? Everything is deep fried on my, and now I'm not saying I didn't eat it. I ate all, every drop of it. But it's like, it was amazing a minute ago. And now everything is deep fried, cornmeal, butter, bacon grease. And I was like, oh, you're killing me. And then those people (laughs) live to be like 95 years old. Yeah. It's like my well, aunt's 97. It's like, I don't understand how you guys eat like that and you're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Good food though. That country food, I'm telling you, nothing better than that country food. What's your favorite part of the day? From when you wake up to go to bed, when are you like, mm, I love this day, this part? You know, uh, I have been all of my life, I've been a morning guy, you know, and so it's, you know, it's really common for me to be up at 5 a.m. and has been for many years. Uh, you know, sleeping in till 6 or 6.30 is literally sleeping in for me. I And, I, and I'm and i kind of, you know, got to a point where I realized that as long as I'm getting six and a half hours, that's my yeah. sweet spot. That's yeah. what I need for sleep. You know, six hours, I'll be a little bit tired. Rarely do I sleep seven, although I do go through some phases of seven. I don't think I sleep eight hours, gosh, three times a year. And so for me, I'm mornings and I own my mornings, always have, whether I'm reading or training and working out, uh, getting on early. You know, some uh, I'm in the west uh, coast of uh, of Canada, as I said a lot of my partners or business associates are in the east, so they're three hours ahead of me. And so what you know, time I'm, is it where you are right now? What time? What are you in the Pacific time? Yeah, I'm Pacific, so you know it's it's one p.m. ish my time, and oh, yeah. uh, so in the east, of course, it's four p.m. And so there's you know I'm often connecting with people on the east coast, so you know that's kind of how my my time flows. But mornings are definitely my favorite time. I like that. I know everyone has a favorite time. 
Some people yeah. go, I don't know. I just get, you know, I get, I, I like all the day. It's like, no, but everybody's got a time where yeah. they're, they're, like, they're in their moment. That's when their their happy spot is. Everybody yeah. does. Okay, so Patrick, tell me what is the biggest goal that you would like to accomplish, like a close goal, and how can the family at Duwonderful help you to accomplish that goal? Well, I don't know how you would help me accomplish it other than, you know, when I say that loud. Well, first off, you know, I turned 65 years old last year. I'll turn 66 this year. But what I started on a journey of understanding fundamentally that I I need something to work backwards from. So I look into the future and there's a, of course, a famous quote or an often used quote. I don't know if it's famous, but it's an often used quote, which is it's not the goal. It's who you have to become to achieve the goal. That's really what matters because goals are just milestones. You hit it and you move on to what's next. So I started to shift that around for me and realize that I look and say, okay, who do I want to be at 70 years old? What do I want my 70-year-old self to represent? And when I started looking at some of the people I'd admire, and only because it was somebody you would be very aware of, which is Kennedy Jr., you know, uh, uh, you know, the independent running for president. And I looked at him and I watched him and I'm going, gosh, that guy's, you know, 68 or 69 years old, however old he is. You know, he's cranking out push ups. He's cranking out, uh, you know, chin ups and doing backflips off cliff he diving. He works out for real. Yeah, what's that? He works out for real. He's always on TV with his shirt off. It's like, that's yeah. what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. So I looked at that and I go, and I've trained all my life and through the pandemic, like some, I let myself go a little bit. And, and I went, you know, that's not even who I am. I mean, who I am is far better than that. So I went, you know, when I'm his age, I want to kind of represent and I want to set a benchmark for what 70 year old can be. I want to set a benchmark what 65 can be. And so, you know, I got back into my training. Uh, I did something that was really easy, much easier than I thought, was I quit drinking. Because I looked at it and I go, why the hell am I drinking? And then I just quit. And yeah. believe me, uh, we still have a lot of wine in this household. Oh. And uh, But, you know, I just said, no, I, d- I don't want to drink anymore. So I quit drinking, you know, back in, uh, I think, September 2023. And... Uh, it's been really it was kind of a no brainer. It wasn't e- it wasn't hard at all. It was quite easy, and uh, and I appreciate it. So the point is, my goal is is working backwards from who I am at seventy and who I in and and so now when I look at my training, my decision making, I'm asking myself what that seventy year old self would say. So whenever I it's a bit of a mental hack for me. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And and the difference I want to make. So one of the my wife, who's a uh, an Olympic and world class mental performance coach in athletics, is uh, you know we 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 also do a podcast called Mindset Matters, and what we're very clear on, Dwan, is our purpose and why we're on this earth, and we have been for many years, but we're just in that phase of our life where we're ramping it up, and that is. Yeah. In our own coaching in the professional and personal development space, small business owners, real estate investors, it. doesn't matter to us. But it really is about defining yourself, understanding what your values are, and then connecting to those values and then living your life in a way that you show up to be your greatest self and live your best life by design. Yep. So that's where we're at. And that's okay. what I stand so to for. to be your best version of 70. So we will help you by holding you accountable. So every time Beautiful. someone sees this podcast, send him a <laughs> message on Instagram and say, hey, man, how's it going yeah. over there? Are you staying on task? What are you doing? And how old are you now? And send me a picture. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And and uh, so, you know, one of one of the things that, you know, I, again, you know, I, I want to be that 70 year old and I, I want to be at 70 who I am today, which is. Ha- fine to take my shirt off in public and not worry and not feel bad about how much weight I'm carrying. Oh, I'm with you. And that's it. So that's kind I of it. I'm 65 I, this year too. So I'm just like, how am I 65? Like, when did that happen? Yes. I was just like 40 like yesterday. I don't understand how I'm 65 today. So yeah. I get you. I was just like, I don't know, this year all of a sudden I was like, dang. I started getting my, my Medicare in the mail and I was like, shoot, <laughs> I have Medicare now? 
<laughs> How's that possible? It's fantastic. I'm really and while we also start, I think we also start to realize, and I'm sure you'll relate to it, is that just how young 65 is. It is and now. Yeah. It, well, it is now. Right. And, you know, I joke all the times that I'm on the Freedom 95 program because I just don't ever intend not to be yeah. uh, being a contribution. I get bored in 10 minutes. I need to be productive. I need to be doing stuff. Yeah. You know, the good news is we live on five acres of land that always requires something. And we've got dogs and horses yep. and you know, cattle. It so, keeps you busy. Keeps you keeps young. You busy. Yeah. And I need to do that. And I and I do the work and I love to do it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm actually uh, growing in and getting my hair, letting it go. It's like, how's my hair that gray? It's like, oh my God, I got a lot of getting rid of this to get to that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm working on it. I'm embracing the gray. Yeah, which is a for big you. step for me. Like, it's a big step. All right. So, so there's a the that my wife would use the term, you're not 65, you're 60 fine. I am. Oh, I like that. 60 fine. I'm going to start <laughs> saying that. I've been needing. I always get like a little lingo every year. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I have not gotten one yet. I'm like, I just 65. And, and in my mind, I'm like, hmm, still alive. But yeah. I feel like, I'm like, that's not very motivational. So I, that's it. I'm going to yeah. tell her I'm stealing 65 because yeah, you're 65. I feel fine. I feel yeah, fine. All right. So just one more time, give us uh, how people can reach you. So it's in the show notes a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. So the easiest way to to kind of reach me is either on Twitter at P Franci, just P Franci straight up, or my Instagram is tedm.podcast. So the Everyday Millionaire, which is the acronym is tedm.podcast. That's my Instagram on my podcast. Those are the easiest places and uh, best places to get in touch with me. I love it. Okay, so I have one more question for you. But before we do that, uh, first of all, everybody that's listening, I want to thank you all for being on the show today with me and sharing your time with Patrick and sharing your time with me. And if you had fun, you laughed, you learned something, you just like watching two beautiful, amazing elderly people talking about how great we are, I want you to follow, subscribe, like, leave a five-star review, all those things like that. Uh, we both have had podcasts for a long time, and I can tell you that a podcast is definitely a labor of love. And we do these to help educate you and cut your learning curve and hopefully keep you from making some of the bonehead mistakes that we have all made. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a thank you to us, just leave a review, follow his, follow mine, follow all of us. And don't be a secret agent. Share it around with all your friends and let them know like, hey, I really like Patrick. I really liked Juan. They're both amazing. Okay, and don't forget to hit me up at Dwanderful, dwanderful.com. I have some free training information for you. Okay, Patrick, last thing. So I want you to give us a parting word of wisdom, but it can only be one word. Mentorship. Okay, let me write it down. Don't tell me, don't tell me what it means yet. Just let me write this down. So everyone that listens to me knows that we have a word of the week. I ask everyone to put it on a yellow sticky and put it up on their mirror. And every day, say the word, mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. So what does that mean to you? The realization I had, Dwan, and you would get this too, is that for me anyways, I was, as a young man, maybe a little bit too prideful or had a story around if I asked for help, it was a sign of weakness for me. And so I didn't ask for help when I needed to or could have, and it would have sped my journey up a, a lot more. And, and I would have been, I would have made probably fewer mistakes. The point is, <laughs> is that I wish I had a me in my life oh. back when I was 40. And so for me, mentorship is about if, if you're 40, you need to find a Dwan. You need to find a Patrick in your life because you have them somewhere, guaranteed. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And when you approach them and have conversation with them and seek guidance, seek counsel, uh, it will really speed up your learning curve and give you the confidence you need. I'll leave you with one quote that I'm always attached to, which is confidence is rarely owned. It's often and most often borrowed. Borrow it from somebody who's been there, done that, and use that as your mentorship and your guidance. I love that. 
I love that. Okay. Well, I really love that. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you spending your time. I realize that time is our most valuable asset. And I believe as we get up later, we realize how valuable our time actually is. So I appreciate you spending your time with me and with all my uh, wonderful family. And guys, we'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And remember that the truth is in the red letter. All right, everybody. See you next week. Ciao. Goodbye, Patrick. Thanks, Dwan. You just had a taste of the most wonderful real estate podcast ever. So just one more thing before you go. If you laughed, if you learned something, please leave a five-star review. Don't be a gatekeeper. Share it with everyone that you know. And I'll see you back here next week for the most wonderful real estate podcast ever.